Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Live with Naz, an hour of laughter and encouragement coming to you from Corona, California. We are now at show number 447, 447 shows together. Let's see, and we're going to update this, and so you can see all of you, and come on, okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's invite our friends from the other side. All right. All right, friends from the other side. Come on in. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Not yet. They're alive. They've been dead for a while, so it's got to give them a chance. Got to give them a chance. Okay. okay. Here we go. All right. Let's see who is joining us. Hello, Sarah. Welcome back. It's been a long time. Come on, everyone. The door's open. Jennifer Dirks, how are you? All right, let's see who else is joining us on this beautiful Thursday night. Matthew Dirks from Tornado Survivor, Wisconsin. I know, bad weather all over Louisiana. We're praying for you guys, too. Alan Goodwin, my beloved, how are you? Happy Thursday to you as well. Let's see who else we are James Blind. Are you kidding me? I'm looking for the Pokemon tournament. Am I in the right place? Of course you are. Of course you are. Mr. James Blind from the morning personality for the Portland Fish Radio. Um, good to see you, brother. Hope your family are doing. Writing and praying. That's good. What are you writing? Your will? <laughs> okay, sorry I missed Monday's show. I've been so busy that I ended up getting the dates mixed up. So when you'd be back? Well, I am back. I was back on Monday. Tuesday we did the podcast with Butch Hartman, the guy from Nickelodeon, amazing. And then Wednesday, yesterday we had a, a graduation, uh, two graduations. So they did it together. This morning I was at a funeral for a family relative who is a sweet, godly uh he's a good man he's a really good man now uh he's greek orthodox he's uh, the nicest guy you can ever meet very self-spoken sweet man and within a few weeks he was gone a few weeks they said oh you have stage four cancer without him feeling anything just going for a checkup you have stage four cancer you have a few weeks and he didn't last just life is too short you don't know When's your day coming? How about that to open a funny live with Ness? But anyway, I was at the funeral this morning, and uh, so I'm here with you guys tonight. Hopefully tomorrow night I'll be with you guys, and then we'll resume a normal schedule, hopefully. As I said, I will do my best to be as many nights since I am on tour, I'm on the road, can always be there every night. I have to meet my fatherly duties, my husbandly duties, my comedy duties, and all the duties that duties duties require. LG Pelly, the man from Fresno, the comedian. How are you? Thank you for joining us again. It's been a while. Michael Ramirez, beloved. People, for some of you who didn't know what happened, I'm Jonathan Busby, a new friend is here. Jonathan, one question. City and state, that's all we ask. First time. Okay, this is what happened that never happened in 445 shows in the past. As you know, towards the end of the show, we do a, you know, the Guinness Book of World Record, and the winner gets to win toilet paper. You only do three guesses, and if your number, what you guess, comes so close or comes to the right number on the Guinness Book of World Record, you win the toilet paper. Well, we have Michael Ramirez. Everybody loves Michael Ramirez. We know Michael Ramirez. I was in his area in, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Forest Lawn in Covina. So, near him, and he always copied somebody, like Lily or Michelle Vullison or someone. And he ended up copying Lily on Monday, but he misprinted, or like, you know what, he keyed the wrong number. So he had two numbers copying Lily, and the third number was different, and that number won him. <laughs> the Guinness Book of World Record. So he was copying Lily. Lily didn't win, but he did. How about that? 
All right. So, Jonathan Busby, how are you? Let's see who else is joining us. I'm glad. Yes. Lonnie. Becky Ottenberry, how are you? A prayer journal, picking inspiration scripture, reflecting on that and writing a prayer. Anyone can PM me. More verses. All right. I love seeing what brings others hope, peace, and comfort. Wonderful. How about Philippians 4.4? 4, 4, be anxious for nothing. No, rejoice in the world in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. All right, let's see. I need a hug, yes. I guess wrong, though. Michael brought food. <laughs> Catherine Masters, how are you? <laughs> okay, all righty. Well, let's see. Last Monday was the last time we were together. I asked you the question, what is... The last thing you want to hear on a Disney ride or on a roller coaster ride. The last thing you want to hear on a roller coaster ride. This is what you guys came up with. At number 20, break time. At number 19, everything must go down before it goes up. Number 18, did you sign the waiver? Number 17, do you know your maker? <laughs> number 16, have you prayed today? Number 15, this is the last thing you'll hear. <laughs> Number 14, we haven't lost anyone today. At number 13, we've only had two deaths this year. At number 12, there's a 70% chance that someone falls out. <laughs> number 11, what's this part for? Hope it wasn't important. Number 10, no breaks. At number 9, kiss your booty bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. At number 8, Want a shower cap? Those loops usually have stuff flying around. Okay, and number seven. I think the tuna sandwich I had is back. <laughs> oh, Suzanne Werther is here. Hello. We're getting our friends back. How are you from Pittsburgh? Okay, at number six. Things, la things you don't want to hear while on a roller coaster ride. There's a minor gap in the track, but usually it's fine. At number five, we lost some bolts, but you should be fine. At number four, wasn't there someone in every seat when this ride left? At number three, should we warn them of the mechanical issues? At number two, huh, I thought they fixed that. <laughs> you don't want to hear that before, you know, on the roller coaster ride. And the number one. Things, what's the last thing you want to hear on a roller coaster ride? Next stop, the pearly gates. <laughs> All right, good job. What is the question? We did not start the question yet. We just started the show. But if you insist, here is your first question. And it came for Mr. from Mr. Rossetti. What are some bad names for a garage sale? What are some bad names? for a garage sale. Okay. My fortune cookie says I'd fall off roller coaster. Other things we don't want to hear on the roller coaster. I'm feeling a bit incontinent. Okay. So what are, I'm pinning the question. Wait. Okay. My junk is now your junk sale. <laughs> junk Emporium, I like that. Pitfall, good. Use underwear cheap. <laughs> hey, divide and conquer, that's good. Discount fruit sales. Discount fruit of the loom sales, right? And since we're going back to that underwear sale. Broken junk sale. <laughs> That's good. You guys are fast. I didn't expect that. I was like, what is a garage? Do people name their garage? Yep, they do. Smells better than good. <laughs> <laughs> Smells better than good. Junk and disorderly. All right, that's good. Gently worn face mask. <laughs> Hi, Rosetti. That's a good question you asked. What are some bad names for a guard sale? Gently worn face mask sale. All right, Debbie's here. Hello, Debbie. 
Welcome. 70 people, 71 people already here. We just started. So good. Hope you all had the chance to watch Butch Hartman on the podcast on last Tuesday. So, by the way, this Sunday, this Sunday morning, 9 and 11, if you're in the Inland Empire, Orange County, Los Angeles, I'm going to be doing the morning services for Father's Day at Elevate Life Church. And what they did, I love what they did. They put my name on several billboards in Riverside. It doesn't get old when I see myself on a billboard. I don't know why. There's something like I feel good about it. It's not a pride issue. It's like, hey, I hope there's traffic so people can slow down and read the time and the church and the date so they can be there. So I would slow the traffic down, just keep going like a cop does, you know, slow the traffic down, stop it, let them read the billboard and then move. Okay, mist and target. Broken hopes and dreams sell. That's so true. That is so true. Jennifer, can't resist stopping, can you? <laughs> Barbie's dolls, graveyard. <laughs> Hi, Dolores. Use this, use this, use this. Divorce, <laughs> divorce discount sale. You had fortune cookies and didn't share? Homeless rejected items, right? Come sail away, right? Mystery items for sale. Missed and target. Where skinny clothes go to die. <laughs> That's true. Reuse, reduce, and recycle. Good. The billboard looked awesome. Thank you. I thought you looked great on the billboard, Naz, but what was that with the razor wire? I know. They made it look like I was going to speak at a prison or something. But then again, you're the Inland Empire, and every empire has the... Rebels, and it has the Empire. Darth Vader, that's what we're keeping them under wire. I don't know. I don't know why, why they took the picture from there. But I have to drive and look at it myself. Price is right, seven years. Targeto. <laughs> Good one, La. Lonnie. Targeto. Your exit stuff. Vanity, vanity. All is vanity. Buyer regrets. <laughs> Uncle Bill finally die. <laughs> Buy his stuff. Poor Uncle Bill. Loafers, lounges, and life sale. <laughs> Midlife crisis sale. 101 endless. <laughs> Recycled Amazon drunk purchases. <laughs> Furniture from the 80s. Wal Moreto. Leslie Kent, the lamb from Illinois. How are you? This is the sweetest person, people. Leslie Kent. Leslie is a, is a speaker, national speaker, married to a wonderful pastor in, in uh, Illinois. And she, we used to go to prisons together. You know, do a lot of prisons. And you know, prisoners loved her because she called everybody a lamb. Some of them looked like goats. But she called them lamps. And that's amazing. That's grace, people. Okay. Hey, Greggs. Give us the worst name for a garage sale. Let's see. What do we got? Walmoreto. Brand new items. The impulse buyer sale. Skid Row specials. <laughs> share and rehydrate. Oh, is it? It's one more minute to share. Every 15 minutes, people, we know we hydrate and share, even though we're having a drought in California. We're having a drought, but we hydrate and share. What are you doing in a drought? They said you can't water your grass, Mr. Governor. What I do is I put fake fire hydrants in my front yard. Let the dogs water my grass. All right, share and rehydrate. It is time to share and hydrate. So, everyone, get your water. Or your favorite non-alcoholic beverage. I don't want nobody drinking on the show. All right, and let's see. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Ramirez. 
So then said Hagrags, sheep stuff with free funky odors. Items of broken dreams. Oh, open air dumpster. <laughs> That's good, Suzanne. You deserve a laugh. <laughs> Open air dumpster. Infomercials and insomnia. Bankruptcy sale. <laughs> Give junk a second chance. That's good. Only one size. <laughs> Skid row specials. Skid. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it, Suzanne. Spatula. My wife made me sell. Oh, poor guy. Mr. Special have to sell some stuff. Kids grew up sale. <laughs> right. Hoarders Unlimited. Good one, Catherine. If you don't share, don't hydrate. You belong in the desert. <laughs> right. Wife made me sell it and downsize sale. <laughs> Where I live, which is Washington State, we've reached 61% of our annual rainfall. I'd love to send you some of the rain we'd had. Yeah. Can you? How much is it for a bucket on FedEx? It's been so chilly we've even had to turn the heat on. Oh, it's 80-something today here. Bad bet sale. Aesthetic estate sale. Empty nesters at last. The kids live with their mom. <laughs> Rochelle is here. Lots of crap. Here you go. Rochelle coming in with a boom. Lots of crap. <laughs> Lost bed sale. I bet you. <laughs> you guys will get people coming if you put these names. Pavement funk. <laughs> funkadelic. Pavement funkadelic. Troy Kester is back from Illinois. Hello, Troy. Been praying for Crosspoint. Awesome. Been praying for. Are you asking me? I don't know what's going on with Crosspoint. Crochet direct inventory. Inflation clearance. <laughs> That's right. Consumer crap tacular. <laughs> Not spectacular. Crap tacular. <laughs> Consumer crap tacular. All right. Fauci COVID recovery charity drive. That's right. Fauci have COVID people. Over its sale. Oh, let me give you an update. I was with a relative of mine who is a big, big deal in the health industry. And he was, I mean, he's, he, he has meetings with the FDA president, so that's how high up he is. And I was asking him about COVID and what's, are we going to get back to where COVID is going to be a big deal or, or they close places down and stuff. And he goes, you know, he said, remember the Spanish flu in the 1900s, 1911, 1917? He goes, yeah. I go, yeah, I remember that. He said, we're, stay, we're still taking flu shots because of that. He said, you go once a year if you have health issues and you take the flu shot. He said, What's a, that's what COVID going to be. Go Once a year, you go take a shot if you need it, if your health is at risk, and, or if one, you're one of those people who take an annual flu shot. That's what they're going to do, give you an annual flu shot, and that's it. So, I hope that's good news for you. Can't afford the dumpster sale. Stuff that never sells sale. <laughs> Stuff that never... Loan shark specials. It's a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. <laughs> I like your positivity, Suzanne. Go fund me. <laughs> Old sock for your thoughts. Down in the dumps, GoFundMe gas sale. Grandma finally went to the home and we're selling 50 years of junk. <laughs> Everything must go, that's right. Paying off college loans, leftover crushed dreams, over it sale. She got over it and she's selling it. Okay, let's see. GoFundMe. Let's see. Can I, I don't remember the Spanish flu. I wasn't alive then. I hope not. But it was there. Why did I buy this crap sale? <laughs> Hoarder shock therapy. Yard sale. We don't deliver. Sanford and Sun sale. That's right. Hoarder's live. We need food. <laughs> Drive by shopping. That's good. 
We miss you guys. Welcome back. Suzanne and James Blind, you've been gone for a while, so good to see you guys with your funny comments. I don't even remember what any of this stuff does. Hello, Elena. Elena's back with us. Hello, Elena. How are you? My great-great-grandfather died from the Spanish flu. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, people will be saying that in a hundred years or more. My great-great-grandma died from COVID. Amazon Addicts Anonymous Extravaganza. <laughs> That's a lot of writing, Rochelle. Your daughter looks so, so cute with her new glasses. I remember when my son got his glasses first time, he was like, his mom started crying and he was walking, trying like he was almost going to fall because he got dizzy the first time. Like, oh. And now all my kids wear glasses. My wife, I, me, all three kids, glasses. My great starting comedy career fund. <laughs> QVC clearance. Sheep ladies clothes. Harry before my wife notices him gone. <laughs> Trying to pay the mortgage. My junk is your treasure. Right. Is Bobby Miller in Facebook jail? I don't know. He, he's probably looking for a car, I think. Shoplifters paradise. Feel free to engage. <laughs> Yard of misfit items. Give them a home. Aww. Take my kids' toys while they are away at camp. <laughs> Come and repurpose the junk. I have to be honest with you guys. Every time I clean the garage, which is not normal, like every, probably every quarter or less, when I have a weekend off, which is going to be my first weekend off in a long, long time this coming weekend. So I'm going to clean the garage a little bit. And what I do is I throw stuff away. And I put them in the, for the Goodwill. And I take them to Goodwill. And if my kids complain, they can go buy them back from Goodwill. I'm serious. I'm like, hey, I'm the only one cleaning the garage here. I told you guys to put your stuff away. And if you don't put it away, it's going to Goodwill. So if you want it, where's that? Where did he put my this thing? I go, it's on shelf, you know, on the shelf in the back of Goodwill. You go all the way by the women's clothing, the shoe department. That's where your shoe's going to be there. Go get it back. While here's $2. Go get it back. That's what I do. <laughs> so I do. I get rid of kids' stuff. So the minute I go in the garage, they're all nervous. Stuff my kid broke. Can't find my house. <laughs> so why are, who's, whose front yard are you doing this? Early birds get no worms. I forgot sale. <laughs> Wolf in cheap clothing. Revenge sale. Good. My literal home shopping network. Facebook jail bail money, please. Island of misfit toys. Don't worry. Restock by tomorrow. Husband was a dirt bag. <laughs> this is revenge. <laughs> That's funny. Purge party. They're probably trying to ban Ness from the garage. They do. The minute I go, where's dad? He's in the garage. No, get him out. Get him out. Hey, dad, what did you throw away? One time I got mad. I, drew, <laughs> I threw away the drum set. A whole drum set went to some good family at Goodwill for a few dollars. <laughs> it's a nice drum set. But then again, you don't put it in the middle of the garage and you don't use it for a year. Because if something spends a year in my garage, they need a better home than us. Mystery items for sale. Take my kids' crap. <laughs> we can say crap here, right? I've already said it. Shoplifted with love. Oh, oh, James. How how can you how can you get arrested for that? How can you get arrested for that? Shoplifted with love. <laughs> Your guess is my guess. You know, I was in, uh, what airport was I? I was in, yeah, I was in Denver airport the, the other day. And they have a Victoria's Secrets at the airport. Why? Why would you have a Victoria's Secret at the airport? I can understand. You're going to the airport. You see the luggage to me or something. With luggage you can never afford. 
But then, if your luggage breaks, you need luggage, so you buy it. There's some clothing places. You can buy clothes. There's some food places. You can buy food. But why would you want a Victoria's Secret right at the airport? I have no clue. Mystery item, when you say shoplifted, that reminds me of Victoria's Secret. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Mystery item for sale. Your guess is my guess. Help me park my car. <laughs> that is my problem, Suzanne. <laughs> I want to get rid of stuff so I can park the car in the garage. That is funny. That is funny. Oh, my Lord. We're back, people. We are back. Better than the Salvation Army. That's true. They lost your gain. Kids are slobs. That's true. It's not my stuff, but I'm making a lot of money out of this. Rejected by Goodwill Sale. Ah, clothing for the Mile High Club. Rent is cheaper at airport than mall. That's right. Go to Victoria's Secret for a surprise to greet your loved ones with. Oh, okay. Is that what they do? Surprise. Yeah, I can see people coming. Flying all day, being stuck. I've never seen the airports that busy, people, in my entire life. Everybody is traveling. Everybody, if you want to fly somewhere next year, buy the tickets today. Buy your tickets now. So crowded. Everybody's airport. Everybody's six inches away from each other. Six inches. That's it. Some people are coughing. No mask. It's um, it's like people forgot. But anyway, it's um, really crazy. Really, really, really. Denver airport was so crowded. So crowded. I've never seen it that way. I mean, if someone falls, they probably will will stampede over him. That's how busy that airport was, and every other airport, and every flight I've taken in the last couple months was completely full, completely. So, just want to help you out. If you need to travel somewhere, travel before. Every flight was late, too. So, make sure you have plenty of time in between the connections, okay? You don't want to miss them. Okay, this is my community service for people, because I, I miss you. Okay, regifting... Re <laughs> gifting sure it is jennifer is the airport expecting a lot of newlyweds or some i don't know but after flying all day and being you know delayed and all that, the last thing on your mind is victoria's secret stuff i forgot to return to blockbuster you know bend oregon ladies and gentlemen according to mr james blind and other my friends that live there they still have the only blockbuster left in the country i think that's true they still have it Victoria's Secret for the unsaved. <laughs> sure, Alan. Though I needed it, you needed more. Oh, how, how care, caring. Bargain Hunter's Magnet. Wanting to rent out a room. Giving my band a place to practice. Hello, Lily Navis. I thought you were gone still. I'm back today and hopefully tomorrow. Yes. The question is, Lily. The question is, worst name for a garage sale. And they've been some good ones so far. Praying for a colonoscopy, paying for a colonoscopy said. Imagine visiting Victoria's Secret and then wind up getting strip search. Talk about embarrassing. I would guess I would guess it is anyway. I wouldn't know for sure. I swear, sure, sure, James. Sure. Is this is this is this confession time, Mr. Blind? Okay. Help clear my brother-in-law's new living space. He's moving in. Staying home. Thanks for confirmation, Naz. Yep. My birthday suit needs to be ironed. <laughs> Balloon sale. Thank you, Naz, for your PSA announcement. Glad to hear it from someone who's traveling. Yes, I've been flying a lot in the last few months. A lot. So, yeah, it's still open, Ben, last time I checked. Yeah, people, if you miss Blockbuster, Bend, Oregon, a nice place to live. Can't afford it anymore because the Californians moved there, and boom, increase the prices. So, But you can go to Blockbuster, rent a, a video. Help us turn our garage into another room. Lily, remember we win. No, I don't remember she won. I remember you won because you miss 
you know, click the numbers and you won. She didn't win anything. Biden COVID test sale. Commitment issue sale. Victoria's Secret at the airport should be investigated. Her secret could be a national security risk. Right, Debbie? No secrets should be allowed in airport. Could be aspiring. That's true. Selling James Patchwell's collection. You'll flip. Help me buy a few gallons of gas. Today, $7, people. I filled up my car. $7. If you don't remember my joke, I not only shake the nozzle, I lick it. That's $7. And nobody's complaining now because it's old news. We already complained about gas. Then we went to the Ukraine and we forgot about the gas. Then uh, Will Smith came in and beat up, you know, Chris Rock. So we forgot about the Ukraine. And then something else came up. The, oh, the monkeypox. So we forgot about Will Smith. And now... What is the latest thing right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Capitol Hill thing. You know, I don't know. This is not a court case. They can't impeach someone. They can't do anything. They're just, you know, just showing off before the election so nobody votes. Uh, I don't know. I'm not political, but I'm telling you, the, we Americans just, come on, swipe. Nope, I'm done. I forgot about this. Let's look at what's new. What's new in the news? Forgot about that. So, $7, people. Help me buy a few gallons of gas. Share and hydrate. Yes, it's 9 o'clock. Thank you, Alan. People, share and hydrate. All 70 people. 68 now. They're going down and up and down and up. Okay. Help us buy baby formula. <laughs> you can't find it. Samford and Sons Garage Sales. Throwback fashions are us. Same here. Good to the last drop. In the Middle East, you just put a hose in the ground. No need to go to a gas station. That's true. 489 here in Wisconsin. 489 in Wis. Oh, Jennifer and Matthew. I think they're. I think they live together. I know. I know. I know they're married, but this is just strong. Troy. Water, hydrate, yes. Almost $7 in Azusa, yep. That's where I filled it up. And uh, San Dimas. American pickers, <laughs> come by our bad choices. Oh, wow. Yes, ours is down 20 cents, and we think we're getting a bargain. I just doubled the price. Evidence locker clean out. <laughs> Finally selling our wedding gift duplicates. Finally. <laughs> and she's single. That's really... <laughs> Awesome. This is good. All right. I'm going to change the question on you. And this question came from our friend Rita. We haven't seen Rita for a while, but she were in contact me and her. Keep her in prayer and just we'll pray that she has the time to get back with us. She's so funny. And the question is, right, right now, reason why your socks go missing. That's consistent with the garage sale. Reasons why your socks go missing. Okay. Give me some reasons why your socks go missing. This is what she wrote. One sock made a left, the other made a right. The left left. Scotty beamed them up. The hole in one went golfing. Get it? The hole in one sock when golfing. The cat plays with them, right? Mikasa e su basura. Okay, my house is garbage. Is in the garbage. <laughs> Who's single, Nazareth? You. <laughs> I keep wanting to kick him out of the bedroom for snoring, but I'll keep him. Took 25 years to train him. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, might as well keep them. Okay. We have cats. Enough said. Yep. The dog ate it. Dryer monster ate them. My daughter thinks they are cool and has a hidden collection of them. True story. Oh, no. I have so many. I have like 20 single socks that I can't find the match for. I don't know. Inspector 12. He took them. The dryer is a... Sock 
carnivores. Suck carnivores. Right. Biden has a new smell finish. <laughs> it smells your hair and your socks. The dryer was hungry. My dog wanted to play tug of war with another dog. We need to start a sock mating program to repopulate them. That's true. I get them mixed up with my husband. That's true. I get them mixed up with John and then Tally and Carol now wear those short socks that I wear. So it's why do they, why do socks can't be specific? Why is like between size one and size fourteen are all one sock? Really? Why? Why can't they just make and go, oh, this will go on a size seven, size eight? No. They're like, what? They smell that bad that you can't even differentiate them, or I don't know. I get them mixed up with my husband. Accidentally sold them at a recent garage sale. Oh, excuse me. Stolen by Vikings. Ooh, the dryer, the washer ate them. Looking for lost souls, <laughs> lost shoes. Right, Debbie. That's funny. They make excellent Barbie dresses with a few scissor snips. <laughs> the kids made puppets, went to sock hop, <laughs> dissolved from detergent that's too powerful. Right. You put them in a, they're gone. Black holes fell into the Bermuda Triangle, ran out of toilet paper. So they left. Leprechauns left sock tested positive. <laughs> Aliens. I know I went to bed with two socks. <laughs> he woke up with one. Water population melted them. I wore ankle socks, Naz. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's stereotypical, isn't it? Uh, selling them on the black market to feed my gasoline habit. Do-it-yourself masks. That's true. Eaten by sockless monster. Not a missing sock, but a sock. Birthday by another pair. Birth by another pair. Oh. Not a missing sock, but a sock birth by another pair. They put out a personal ad saying, single and looking for a mate. Socks were all so dirty that they walked away. The socks have commitment issues. That's funny. Hi, hi. Becky Voth is here. Finally got some technology to work so I could join you. Good to see you. Speaking of technology, people, let me ask you this. How many of you, please let me know, if you're in the virtual reality, in the metaverse right now? Because I'm meeting with a director tomorrow in Los Angeles, Culver City, where the studios, and we're talking about virtual reality and having a place in virtual reality just a thought so how many of you have the the oculus the thing that you put on your eyes and you enter into the metaverse or the virtual reality world this is going to be big people one billion dollars a year facebook invest in that technology so it's going to be in the future we all can get together, all our avatars, and maybe do it together. Do the same show somewhere. Anyway, so this is my idea, and I'm working on it. Uh, the socks have commitment issue. My feet are too powerful. They hated being worn with sandals. The dog got hungry. My foot funk caused them to spontaneously combust. <laughs> Do-it-yourself diapers. The drawer ate it. Sock drew burglars by one-legged man. <laughs> so a company called Kane 11 sells individual sizes. Oh, really? That is so good to know. I do need that. Kane 11, isn't that the chicken place? Raising cane. These boots were made for walking, but these socks weren't. <laughs> M is, she wants the Oculus. 
toddlers. The toddlers did it. Not in it. Government confiscated them and called me a bigot where they found out I only wear black socks. <laughs> Dust bunny chew toys. It's called a... Oh, by the way, I have to do to admit this to... Uh, Matthew and Jennifer Dirks gave me a beautiful Piggly Wiggly uh, for... It's a toy. It's not a toy. It's a stuffed animal. It looks like Superman, Super Pig. And Jennifer threw it actually on stage for me because I do a, a whole bit about Piggly Wiggly. That was so kind and so nice and I loved it. And I brought it home and it's in our bedroom. And that demon dog Delilah got a hold of it. And the late Piggly Wiggly who's really, I'm going to call Lily so we can bury him properly because he's not kosher anymore so if i get the chance people i will let you see the remains of piggly wiggly actually i'm going to do that right now and give you a beauty break Come here, Delilah. This is what happened, people. This poor thing was killed. To, there was a, an injury to his skull. And then there's some bleeding here. You can see the blood where he was bitten. His cape was gone. His glasses. And who did that? Come here. Come, come here, come here, come here, get up, up here, come on, Delilah, up here, show the people you criminal, you, look, come on, Delilah, come, come, up, 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 good, good, look at the people, yeah, this is your, look what you did, look what you did, do you feel guilty, do you feel guilty, huh, 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 yeah, you're acting nice now in front of the show. In front of TV, you're nice, but look what you did. This is a gift. Here, shame on you. Come on, finish it up. All right. Just wanted to share my pain with you guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Hey, 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 hey. Leave me alone. Take the dog. Take the pig and leave. Toddlers, the toddlers did it. Ah, oh, it's called a slingshot dust bunny. Ah, oh, sort of high. As soon as you said my name, it froze and said the live video had ended. Ah, so saw cran off with nail clippers. Oh, oh, this is no, yeah, no faithfulness there. Dogs, the dogs think they're chew toys. Toenails were too sharp and kept sitting, <laughs> slitting the stitches. Pinocchio needed some friends, made a sock quilt. Oh, it's confession time with Naz. I'm too sexy for my socks. <laughs> Barbie needed a sleeping bag. I tried to throw it. <laughs> Suck it to me. Oh no, rest in peace, Wiggly Wiggly. <laughs> Happened to us as well. Oh good, so I'm not... Crosspoint Human Services here in Danville, Illinois, needed prayer and supernatural intervention. Depressed state over there. Program service being cut out. I told you about this before in private message. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Crosspoint. Okay. I hear you can be, you can buy property. It will be able to buy property in Metaverse. 
It's no from me. Okay. Delilah probably knocked the stuffing out of that plush toy that ate it. And it stopped again. I'm sorry. Uh, watch with your daughter. Uh-huh. A naked Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> All right. Oh, guys. It's... All right. Let's see. Let me go and see what else I can get you a shirt for it. Oh, no. It's too brutal. Delilah going for the junk. <laughs> Does she feel guilty? No, she doesn't. Not at all. Not at all. Getting piggly with it. Getting piggy with it. That's funny. Oh, let her play with the piggy. My last night at Camp Sierra by Huntington Lake. All right, Pancho, my beloved. Welcome back. You are supposed to bring her treats, not seven years. <laughs> that was horrific. I just picked myself up off the floor. Oh, <laughs> guess... I'm sending you a shirt. Yep. Apparently, I'm so repulsive that even my socks leave me. Read the, get the smelling salts. <laughs> the sock went on TikTok and pop locked until it was mocked and slithered around the block. Socks missing due to inflation. Did you smell those feet? Hydrate and share. Yes, people, hydrate and share. And let's do the Guinness Book of World Record. Guinness Book of World Record today. I don't want to get back to food, but hey, National Fudge Day. We went from socks, dirty socks, to food. N no, Piggly was in the middle, so that's food friendly. National Fudge Day today. Did you know that? Did you eat fudge today? All right. The largest lap of fudge was made by Northwest Fudge Factory in Canada, in Levac, Ontario, Canada. On October 23rd, 2010, prepa preparation for the f of the fudge took one week and contained portions of vanilla, chocolate, and maple flavors. How much did this large slab of fudge weigh? Over a thousand, under under ten thousand. Over a thousand, under ten thousand pounds. Over a thousand, under ten thousand. Gremlins sold them on eBay. Woohoo! Fudge, yes. Someone steals them and makes socks monkeys out of them. Round the corner fudge is made. Oh, you're in Pennsylvania, yeah. Trick or treat, my socks smelled my feet. What the fudge? Why do you socks go missing? There's a glitch in the time-space continu continuum. All right, Sarah said 3,555. 5,555, 7,555. Suzanne Weirder said 6,000, and uh, 2,000, and 8,000. And uh, let's see. Okay, Matthew said 7,330, 5,755, and 35,90. Becky Ottenberry, 22, 25, 44, 45, and 66, 65. All righty, let's see. And Elaine said 23, 45, 56, 78, and 78, 90. My dryer has a portal to another universe. Dolores said 2349, 78, 63, 12. Mr. Lonnie Pelly said 7557, 5150, and 8500. Catherine Masters, 1234, 4567, 6789. Mr. Blind said 6549. Alan Goodwin, oh, have a good day, a blessed day tomorrow. Praying, all of you, all in the life with her, back with those who can make it tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow, Alan. Thank you, brother. Debbie Malone said 1548, 1156. 80. Sarah said, the rooster and ruby, the red hen, usually go sockless while in Hawaii. Mm. By the way, they say they're staying in Hawaii until the weather gets better in Washington. Sure. I know they are homeless, but hey, who am I to say? Uh, that's what I saw with my own eyes. All socks go to heaven. <laughs> All righty. 
Come on, give me your best. Good. Everyone guessed. Let's see. Lily. Oh, here we go. Lily said 56, 60, 60, 51, 60, and 55, 99. My sister keeps taking them, adding to her collection. All right. Are you guys still? Any, anybody didn't guess in the Guinness Book of World Record? So, <laughs> Lily Salt. Wait for your copycat guy to copy you. So then, sock and roll. Michael Ramirez said 56, 60, 51, 60, and 59, 55, 99. He got it right. Makes sense. They have souls. Sold. One more sold, and I'm going to read. Naz, the rooster said that you probably just saw some of their extended family. Oh, when you were in Hawaii, and they often get mistaken for them. Okay. Like, I don't know Ruby. <laughs> Sarah said sold. Okay, sold. Here we go. <laughs> Lily can't wait. Okay, here we go. The largest slab of fudge weighted 5,760 pounds. 5,760 pounds. And the winner, of course, that came closest within five is Matthew Dirks with 57.55. You can't get closer than that. 57.55 for Mr. Matthew Dirks. 57.55. Congratulations, Matthew. You get to enjoy this beautiful toilet paper and let Jennifer use some of it. And thank you for the Piggly Wiggly. Congratulations. All righty. Mr. Michael Ramirez. Nope. Sold. Way to go, Michael. Oh, congratulations. Matthew Dirks. All right, people. It is time right now for our... Prayer time. He won't. He won't let you share. <laughs> Matthew. All right, guys. Well, cool. <laughs> well, if he if he sells all the stuff in a garage sale in his garage sale to pay for the colonoscopy, he probably gonna need this. But anyway, anyway, prayer. I covet your prayer for Carol. She is flying back from Mexico tonight. She will arrive in. LAX at 11 p.m. She didn't feel good leaving Mexico, of course. <laughs> the food and the water. I told her not to eat or drink over there, but then four days is a lot. So anyway, so keep her in prayer that she's fine and she gets home safe to her apartment. Uh, let's see. Prayer request, people. Say, praying for Carol, same prayers as always, Jennifer. We're praying for you guys, for your situation, the, the resident. Play, God will provide the right place for you and Matthew and M. Pray for employment for me. All right, Suzanne, what do you like to do? What do you do? What kind of work? Maybe I know somebody. I don't know, but you never know. Who came in? That Nobody. That's the church bells, Christians. Cool. See you in Green Bay soon again. <laughs> ah, same for me and my friends and her son, yes. Unspoken prayer for a problem I have going on. Oh, Lily, we'll be praying for you. You're an art teacher. Oh, wonderful. You can you can do this on Zoom. You can teach people on, you know, there's several sites that teach. You know, you can be, you can get paid for having students and you can teach them art. All right, let's see. Pray for Rita. Pray for our creative work. That's awesome. If anybody needs some artwork or someone who's an artist that can do that, uh, let so they know I could be a professional brainstormer. <laughs> Unlocking others' creativity. Oh. Let's see. Elena said, I've been having problem with my gallbladder. Oh, okay. The doctor found at least three gallstones. I will be having surgery sometime in September to remove gallbladder and the gallstones. I have to pay the copay first before surgery will be scheduled. I don't have a date yet. I will let you know. Need copay and that I have no attacks. And that I have. will be praying for you, Elena. Pray for our nation, yes. 
creative consultant. Family here needs prayer. Oh, grandfather and two granddaughters with him were in fatal car wreck. Grandfather funeral was today. Granddaughters are tomorrow. Oh, we'll be praying for the family. Pray for some doors to open. I will. I will, Lonnie. Prayers for Catherine. More gigs for Naz and safe travels. Thank you so much, Sarah. Go to Green Bay. All right. Pray for all the conflicts going on in this world. I know there's a lot going on. Pray for pray for the family of my friend, my our relative who passed out, who was buried today. Pray for his family. Remy is very active. That's praise God. That's an answer to prayer. Pray for Remy and um, uh, Stella from Bend, Oregon. That you know they have health issues constantly. So keep them in prayer. Alrighty, I just want to encourage you a little bit. In Colossians three twelve, it says, "Therefore, as the elect of God, who are the elect of God? You who are called His children." You're elect of God. God elected you. You chose him and he elected you. That's a, that's a very big subject when people talk about uh, are we, uh, let's see, are we Calvinist? Did God already choose his own? Or are we Armenians? We have a choice in that if we want to follow God or something. That's a huge issue, but let me explain it to you as simple as I can. Imagine, of course, you can't, you can't imagine your brain, our brain can. Imagine you're standing on top of a, a six-story building, and there's a parade going on. And there's people walking in. They're walking through the parade. And some people go through a tiny, narrow road on the left, and some people walk on this wide road, continue on that wide road. Since God is outside of the domain of time, he can tell all the people that chose to go on that narrow road. He knows, he knows them. He didn't order them to go. He didn't force them to go. He knew them. Does the Bible say this? Who knew this who he knew, not forced, but knew. So when God is outside of time and he sees the future and he knows those who decided to do this road, he knew them, therefore he chose them. Therefore they were elected before time began. And their names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life before time began. And so how, how did their name was written before time has begun and they get to make choices because God is outside of time. I hope that, does that help? Does that help you understand it? Because it was for a while. I was like, I can't understand it, but it did. So, uh, therefore, as the elect of God, holy, yes, we are, cons we are we're going through sanctification. That means God is working on us. You accept Christ, you're righteous, you're elected by God, you're called a saint, you knew, if you die, you're going to heaven because of the righteousness of Christ. But while you're in the earth, the Holy Spirit of God is working on sanctifying you, making you more like Jesus, making you more working on those issues that you're having, you're back and forth going, going, why did I do that again? I'm sorry. <laughs> and why am I doing this? And you start growing slowly, slowly, and you go, wow, I'm a lot better than I used to be. Why? Sanctification. The Holy Spirit is working on you. And until the day of Christ comes back, that work is continuous, it's sanctifying. God is trying to make you more like his son. So he said, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. They sound easy. They're not. Every one of them will get you on your knees and say, Lord, help me to be more merciful. Lord, help me to be kind. Lord, help me, humble me, Lord, I'm too proud. Help me to be meek, for the meek inherit the earth. 
Help me to be long-suffering. I'm impatient. I get angry fast. I want to be long-suffering. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Help me forgive people. And that's hard too. So, but the Holy Spirit of God will continue to work on sanctifying you and making you more like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sarah said, God will finish the good work he started in you because he loves you. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lonnie. I love you guys. Thank you so much for a great night. Hope to see you tomorrow night. Unless my wife comes to me and said, Nazareth, we need to go here. You've been gone for a long time, and I need. I was waiting for you to come home so that we can do this. I doubt if this is going to happen, but if it did, I'll let you know. But so far, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, everybody. Love you guys. So good to be back.